Uh, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak on Telecommunications Legislation Amendment Deregulation Bill 2014 and the Telecommunications Industry Levy Amendment Bill 2014. Mr Deputy Speaker, these bills form an important part of our government's deregulation agenda. This is all about cutting red tape, unnecessary and outdated regulation, making life easier for individuals and businesses. All in all, our government has identified $2.1 billion of savings in red tape reduction. The bills before the House include measures dealing with the abolition and transfer of the Telecommunications Universal Service Management Agency to the Department of Communications and also deregu deregulatory measures in relation to extending the do not call register registration period, reducing the scope of telephone pre-selection obligations, reducing reporting and record keeping requirements on telecommunications companies and other related amendments. And Mr Deputy Speaker, I have to say in Karangamite, the electorate I so proudly represent, the government's very strong deregulation agenda has been welcomed very warmly. A recently, Small Business Minister, the, uh, of course uh, the member for Dunkley, visited Karangamite and held a small business forum. And there were small businesses from all around the Geelong and greater Karangamite region who attended to talk about their issues. And there is nothing more significant for businesses and for individuals than feeling that they are being listened to by government. And it was a great opportunity for small businesses to say directly to the minister, this is what's concerning me. This is what the problem is. And it's all very well to talk about a deregulation agenda, but of course there is so much in the way of regulatory burden that's imposed on small businesses. And the only way that we as a government are dealing with this and, and delivering the $2.1 billion in savings that have been delivered so far is by identifying the specific regulatory burdens. And that's what we are doing, systematically and methodically going through these regulatory burdens, addressing them one by one and providing the appropriate remedies. And I do particularly want to thank the Minister for Small Business for visiting Karangamite, for listening and for sending out the strong message that no matter whether it's a form no matter whether it's a piece of legislation, we are there as a government addressing these issues. Because if we strip away unnecessary regulations from businesses, be they small or large, Mr Deputy Speaker, we will free up business owners and people who work in businesses and we will give more opportunities to create jobs. We will unwind unnecessary red tape, which of course is adding so much to the cost of doing business. And in the region I represent, and particularly in Geelong, there are some real challenges at the moment, uh, but there are also some great opportunities. So many thousands of wonderful small business, businesses creating jobs, and I know this has been very, very welcomed. Mr Deputy Speaker, of course, uh, in my electorate, and I think it's fair to say right across Australia, there is concern about unsolicited phone calls. There are a few things more frustrating than sitting down to eat dinner with a family and the phone rings, and it's one of those calls. And we understand that frustration, and again, we are listening. The Australian people have embraced the Do Not Call Register. There are now 9.3 million current registrations with around 1 million numbers added every year. It's been a remarkable success. More than two-thirds of Australian households have listed their number on the register register demonstrating the popularity of, the, of this initiative, which was introduced by the Howard government. That is why we have introduced this legislation to change the Do Not Call register, so it will only be necessary to place a phone number on the register once, as opposed to re-registering after eight years. So This change means that households will no longer have to remember to renew their registration. It helps to avoid frustration. It helps to make the whole process more seamless and, of course, it sends the very strong message that we are there as a government to make life easier for Australians 
And while this may seem a reasonably straightforward initiative, it's important. This significant new initiative will save $3.4 million a year over, over 10 years in administrative costs, and of course it's just one more reform as part of our $2.1 billion of savings that we have uh, delivered. Mr Deputy Speaker, on our second red tape repeal day on the 29th of October, we outlined nearly 1,000 pieces of legislation and regulation totalling over 72,000 pages which is to be removed. And of course this has been very warmly welcomed by business owners, local community groups and individuals in my electorate and right across of the country. It really is making a, a, a massive difference. And I want to reflect on a really good example, and I would really encourage small business owners in the electorate of Karangamite, if they have a problem, come address the issue and see me. Because a really good example is Gary Kerr of Kerr's Hire. He had addressed this under the previous government. I have, think it's fair to say there wasn't perhaps the appropriate traction that he was hoping for. And uh, he raised a particular issue concerning the Personal Property Securities Act, which was forcing hire companies to register short-term leases and really imposing enormous regulatory burden. Uh, this was time and money that small businesses like Kerr's Hire could not afford. I took my concerns to the parliamentary secretary, to the Prime Minister, Josh yes. Frydenberg, and the government, of course, was very responsive. And in our very first red tape repeal day, uh, we made some very important changes to the legislation, such that Mr Kerr will now only need to register the goods when they are hired for more than one year rather than the 90-day period. I do acknowledge that there is some more work to be done in relation to this particular legislation. There is a review of the entire Act uh, being undertaken at the moment. and Again, I am very um, keen that Mr Kerr and other members of the hire industry are engaged in this process. But it is a very, very good signal that we are absolutely determined to, to listen to the concerns of businesses and to take the appropriate action. I want to particularly note uh, the comments of the Chief Executive Officer of the Geelong Chamber of Commerce, Bernadette Uzelak. And I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, it was wonderful to have the Geelong delegation in Parliament yesterday, uh, the Committee for Geelong, the Chamber. Uh, the Mayor of the City of Greater Geelong uh, and other civic leaders here to talk about our great city and our great region and all very engaged looking at what we need to do as a city to grow and to go from strength to strength. And As I say, it's all about jobs and, uh, and that is what our focus is on and, and certainly, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, the focus of the coalition government, the Victorian government, is firmly focused on jobs. Uh, Ms Uzelak was quoted in the story in the Geelong Independent on the 28th of March, uh, saying there is a real cost burden for Geelong business owners, and mind you, the chamber represents about 800 different businesses, so a very important organisation and a very perhaps one of the oldest, I think, in Australia. So very significant. There is a real cost burden for Geelong business owners who spend hours doing unnecessary paperwork or who are forced to pay staff or contractors to comply with a relevant and outdated regulation. Geelong small businesses need the best opportunity to grow into big businesses. Uh, and then the, the Prime Minister in this House on the 19th of March said in relation to Mr Kerr's particular concerns, Kerr's highest concerns were uh, because under the rules as they stand, Many short-term leases have to be registered. This means more form-filling, more time-wasting and more unnecessary expense. Red Tape Repeal Day will fix this as it will tackle many other instances of redundant and unnecessary regulation. No one likes filling in forms. It costs time, it costs money and it costs, costs jobs. That is why Red Tape Repeal Day is so important, in the words of our Prime Minister. Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, the regulatory burden on the telecommunications industry is, is especially burdensome. A build-up of red tape over almost two decades has left us with a number of outdated and onerous requirements which limit innovation. This bill delivers by lowering the cost burden on industry and consumers with expected uh, savings in this regard of some $6.9 million a year. 
I wish to commend uh, the Minister for Communications and his parliamentary secretary, uh, who is here in the House today, for their hard work working with industry to come up with these regulatory savings. And that's what it's all about, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. Strong, collabor strong collaboration, listening to these important stakeholders and taking the appropriate action to deliver the savings and to generate jobs growth. In line with the government's current policy to consolidate smaller agencies to reduce administrative and governance costs, the government, as part of the May 2014 budget, announced its intention to abolish uh, TUSMA, transfer its responsibilities to the Department of Communication. Now, this will enhance lines of accountability, help the government focus on its core responsibilities and priorities, ease the cost burden on business by modestly reducing the amount of the telecommunications industry levy that industry pays to help fund the cost of delivering the universal service obligation and other public interest telecommunications services. It will also create greater certainty for industry by having a single agency responsible for policy and implementation of telecommunications universal service matters. The bill will also remove arrangements for the ACMA to register e-marketing codes, given that this is no longer relevant, Mr Deputy Speaker. Consumers will still enjoy strong consumer protection measures, of course, under the regulatory regime established by the SPAM Act of 2003. Pre-selection allows consumers to choose a different provider for local calls and line rental and long distance and uh, international calls. There are 10.3 million landlines in service in Australia, but only 30,000 consumers who still choose to vary their service providers under pre-selection. The amendments contained in this schedule are proposed as a deregulatory measure to relax the future requirements to provide for pre-selection. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, these bills are important. Uh, they are important because they reflect our government's strong commitment to reducing the red tape burden. They are important because they are part of a $2.1 billion of savings that we are delivering already in just some 12 months. And, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, for these reasons, I commend the bills to the House. Okay. The question